There they are. There they are. Hi, welcome to Bird's Roost Farm. <laughs> My name is Marlena, and if you're new here, I am going to teach you some about canning, a little bit about gar a little bit about gardening because I am a beginner myself, I'm trying to figure out all these things. We have had horrible weather the last two years, so my garden hasn't done much. But I tell you what I can do. I can preserve food and I can teach you how to do it as well. Today, we're gonna to be canning potatoes. So, last month at the store, I went and put a 10 pound bag of potatoes was $8. That's ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> it's really ridiculous. So, I went back uh, shopping this weekend, yesterday, with my husband, and I found a 10 pound bag of potatoes for $3. So when I found those, I thought, I'm gonna get my canner out. Well, the thing about that is, is I have two canners. I have a Miro canner that holds seven quarts. I, mean, I don't know what quart it is because someone gave it to me. And I have a, um, what is a Presto, I have a Presto pressure canner, and I got it a few years back. I think it's a 23 quart canner. Anyway, my gaskets are toast. I've tried and tried and tried, given it my best to fix that situation. So what I'm gonna do with these potatoes, because I have to can them. I have to can them or I have to freeze them. And honestly, freezing them takes more time. And I don't have that kind of time today because I have a few things going on that I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to go ahead and water bath can these potatoes, which a lot of people are afraid to water bath can low acidic vegetables, fruits, etc. Well, think about a hundred years ago or more previously, that how canned goods were processed. Now, let's get into that. So if you go ahead and Google the history of canning, you will see that Napoleon Bonaparte offered a reward for anyone who could safely preserve food using any method. And so, 15 years later, a man did, I can't remember his name, but to think that it's 1795, my gosh, was that 200 years ago? Plus, canning became a thing. And they had water bath canning, that's all they had. The pressure canner didn't come around until um, the 1900s. So, families preserved food in this way and it was safe, okay? So this is what I choose to do in my kitchen. You can choose your own thing, but it's just a simple way and an effective way to can food. So what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my potatoes. I've got 10 pounds. I'm gonna go ahead and probably do 15 pounds altogether because I have eight jars. 13 pounds of potatoes will do seven quarts. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 15 pounds because I've had eight quart um, capacity in my pot that I have on the stove. I'm gonna go ahead and boil the water in that pot. I have a separate pot that's spick and span, wiped down clean. I'm boiling water in to sterilize it to use in my potato jars. And I'll take you into my kitchen in just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and get started here on peeling my potatoes. So I chopped it in half, chopped it in half and cubed it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stick these in some water I have right beside me so they can go ahead and be soaking the starch out. The part I don't like about canning is cleaning up. So I'm starting this process. Put the potatoes in a colander, okay? 
I'm going to rinse them. I forgot to leave some water in this pot with them, so I'm going to cover them back up real quick. Rinse, rinse, rinse. Rinse. And you may want to rinse these with hot water since they're going to be boiling for a couple minutes. I'm going to go ahead and boil them for a couple of minutes just because that's what the recommendation was. So. Dun, dun, dun. Here we go. I would like for you to exercise caution when putting the potatoes into the water because it's hot. It's not boiling yet, but it'll be all right. I just kind of dip my colander down in there and ease them out. All right. And possibly you don't have to boil them. You have to bring them up to boil for two minutes. I believe that the theory behind par boiling them, pre boiling them, partially cooking them, is so they'll soften up a little. So when you open them, they won't be mush uh, and they won't be hard. If you see any like little things you missed, little bad spots, you just go ahead and cut them out. If you missed any? Now I did miss a couple I see. You don't want any blemishes or skins on your tape. Ooh, on your tater. And my jars are washed and they're dry. They're not hot. Because, uh, well, they're not hot. I'm going to adjust the water in this pot so I can put the other potatoes in. Take a little bit of that water out. Put the other potatoes in. Okay, now I'm going to say that a nice simmer for a couple of minutes will work. I don't believe it has to be a full rolling boil. Let's check them potatoes out. Fun fact, if you soak carrots in water for about 30 minutes and then put them in a bag in the refrigerator, they last longer and they don't get dry. That's what they look like in pot. I just put them in. Theory is just cook them enough for like a couple of minutes and boiling. You see, oh, I was cutting up celery earlier. There's a celery, <laughs> the celery leaf. Okay, there's one that I didn't get all the skin off of. I'm gonna take take him out and uh, skin him off. Canning is a long process, but at least since I'm not freezing these. I won't have to put them out on a flat sheet pan and pre-freeze them. If I was doing french fries, I'd cut them up french fry like. I get a I would ideally have hot boiling water so I could dip them for 2 minutes and bring it out. Then I put them in an ice bath to stop the cooking. Lay them out flat on the cookie sheet and freeze them until they're frozen and then put them in a bag. Boiling potatoes <laughs> takes forever. I had them on my little burner. And so, what had happened was, it wasn't cooking very fast. <laughs> and so, my water bath canner was rocking and rolling on the large burner. And my potatoes are barely going on the small one. So, I switched them places. And so, we should be getting rocking and rolling very shortly. But since we're waiting, okay, so I've heard two different scenarios, okay? I've heard a tablespoon of salt per quart, and I have heard a teaspoon of salt per quart. But the teaspoon of salt per quart was for pressure canning. So I'm thinking a tablespoon of salt is for water bath canning. I may regret this 
I may regret this life decision because <laughs> I don't know, I might regret it. Okay, anyway. <laughs> we're gonna go with it. So, I've got Mrs. Wages pickling salt, canning salt. You want to use canning salt so your, um, your fluid is clear. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this now. Okay, go ahead and use my funnel with it so none gets on the side hardly. I'm gonna wipe the ribs down anyway, so it really don't matter a whole lot. But I have a hard time with messes. I'm kind of messy. Messy Bessie. But your canning salt is very important in potatoes because they are not acidic like tomatoes. Okay, so they're kind of like green beans. And we are water bath canning. So, tablespoon of salt it is. And that sounds like a lot of salt, but honestly, have you ever sit there and took the measurement of how much salt you actually use in like mashed potatoes or something? Because you have to use a lot. So I'm really hoping that this works out. Honestly, this is my first time canning potatoes ever. So I watched a couple YouTubes. Uh, my friend Kayla uh, cans tomatoes or potatoes all the time. So talk to her. I just saw what she did. So I thought, hey, if Kayla can do it, I can do it too. <laughs> Which is true. Don't be afraid to try something. If pioneers did it like this, then there ain't no reason why we can't do it because our kitchens are a hundred times cleaner probably than what they had in the old days. Like for sanit sanitization measurements and such, we are a long way removed from what we used to be, which is good or bad. Who knows? Microbes are good for you. You know, germs, eh. But microbes, so there's good microbes. Anyway, I'll bring y'all back in a second. All right, now when I stick a fork, I mean, not a fork, but a knife in, it, oh man. Uh-oh, it fell off of there. It's okay. They're still crunchy, but that's kind of what you want. But when you stick them with a the knife, you want it to go in pretty easy, not too easy. But go in with that a whole lot of resistance. Mm, that'll work. That'll work. Okay. At least that's my plan. I'm sticking to it. Because they're going to cook more than can, or they're going to cook a little bit. You know, they're going to get. They're going to be hot for a few hours, like. 12. <laughs> I'm going to water bath them for three hours and then they're going to sit on the counter for another three. So they'll be hot for at least six hours. So they will continue to cook. So you don't want them to crumple up to nothing. So in my theory, <laughs> this is a way for doing it. Here, I'm boiling water from earlier. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and fill up that jar. But these potatoes that are already in here, we'll start this first. I hope I didn't overcut potatoes, but I looked online and it said that like 
said uh, uh oh I got some of the other one in there. You don't want maybe I should have rinsed these first. Let's do that. Ah my salt. That's what it was. <laughs> Mistakes happen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rinse that salt out of there. I'm going to go ahead and cool these potatoes down just a smidge. Just a smidge. Hey, where's my can of salt? Oops. And really, I'm not going to edit that out because that's real life. This is what happens. It's okay to make a mistake. But that's how I'm going to fix that mistake right there. All right. I think, the, I think I'm going to just rinse the starch off of these a little better than what I had going on. Okay. And I'm going to put some cold water in this pot so they'll kind of quit cooking. You could use an ice bath if you want to, but really these aren't that soft. So I really don't think an ice bath is necessary. Okay. But let's just go ahead with this, this one. Let me get a new, new knife. So I missed a little spot. Oh, you got a little spot right there. All right, one more time. a fancy headspace measure her or nothing so I just kind of eyeball it to what I think where's my cleaning knife there it is so these should be an inch of headspace and you kind of want to sh shake it just a little bit maybe you don't want to overpack it there's a fine line between enough and overpacked and so I'm not sure exactly where that is with this recipe because I've never done this before but I'm just giving you some tips on how I think this should be done from the research that I've done on it and my own personal like experience with canning okay so you're gonna shake it down a little bit I'm not sure if these float or not once they're done I'm really not sure and I, I really don't want to overpack these because I want all of that potato to be under water you know what I mean once they get packed all right I'm gonna fast forward y'all through this next part <laughs> That's what I thought too. I think I got enough to make a batch. Did you uh, thaw out that work? No, not yet. I have it. I've been working on this, honey. You can grab it if you'd like.
Now I'm going to get this, this it's just my little bee spatula. I'm going to debubble. This may cause you to have to refill it with some water because it uh, adjusts the, um, there's air trapped down in there and when you debubble it, it comes up to the top. And so your water level may displace lower instead of rising, okay? So you're looking for bubbles here, debubbling. Okay. All right. All right, we need some more water, so. Okay, it's already in there. Looks good to me. Fantastic. Let's see if I got my lid grabber. Rinse it off real quick. Okay. Now I put these lids down in here to soften the uh, compound on here. That was a deal back in the day. They say you don't have to do it anymore, but um, I have I quit doing it. Okay. And what I found was. I had uh, seal failures when I didn't do it. And I had less, I mean, or I had no, less to no seal failures when I softened the compound on there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue doing it. And I can tell it's softer. Huh? Oh. Get all these on. Pretty little snug, not real, pretty snug. Not, not too tight, don't wrench them on there like down real hard, but just put them on there, kind of tight, fingertip tight. Don't use a whole lot of wrist. Okay. My water isn't boiling, I'll show you over here, okay? Let me take you down. And show you what we got my water isn't boiling yet it was and i turned it off okay now i need my jar getter uh oh dun 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 where's my jar getter where's my jar getter at there it is <clears throat> I made eight. Turn it all the way up. I had it turned down. Okay, so turn it all the way up on high. What I'm gonna do is I had my lid over here. Put the lid on it. Check back in 10, 15, 20 minutes. And it should be boiling if your water's pretty hot when you got it in there. Cause this was almost boiling. Now, I don't think that there's three inches of water or two inches of water above there. Now there's about an inch, but I had extra in this pan. Let's pour that in there. And that should be about there. Something I learned over the years also is you always want to have a pail, not a pail, a bucket, like a pot of water boiling on the stove or simmering. Because if your water level gets low in your pan, 
then you don't want it to go under boiling to bring it back up to a boil because it has to be constantly boiling for three hours at a rolling boil. So you don't want the chance having to start over or try to finagle your time. Just do it right the first time. Okay, so I'm uh, gonna let this heat back up, start boiling, and I'll bring y'all back. Thank you. 